I don't know about you, but there are times, and I'm just preaching to myself right now, but there are times, hey man, where I see somebody walk by, and my Lord, my heart breaks because they need God. But they're so wicked. Pastor, they're so mean. Pastor, you don't know what my boss says to me at work. You don't know how mean and angry my neighbors are at me. And I got to remember, I know. And one of these days, the Lord will come and he will rescue the righteous. But until then, he's coming and he's knocking on the doors of us and saying, Hey, guess what I'm fixing to do? Guess what I'm getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to destroy this whole thing. What do you want me to do? I would pray that tonight all across the building, men, women, and children, I would pray that we would be able to find a place to say, Lord, please, give me one more day. Give my family one more month, God. Let me have one year to build this church, God, and I know that I can reach this community. Let me have one more block party. Let me have one more fundraiser. Lord, let me have one more revival. Are we looking for the righteous? Are we looking for those who we think are worth saving? People that look like us. People that are attractive. People that, that, that smell good and drive the right cars and have the right jobs. Are we looking for people who are the same color or speak the same language? Or are we just looking for the wicked? Hallelujah. If I could, I want to add a log to the fire that's already burning in this church. And in you for the lost. Amen. I believe that's what God is burdening us with. Amen. I don't want there to ever come a time where I kneel at an altar and I don't pray for the lost. In Job 16, 21, oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleaded for his neighbor. I want to tell you today, I want to repent to you. I haven't pleaded for my neighbors like I need to. Sister Vesta Mangan stirred me one time as a young man. I heard her say one sentence. Should anyone hear the gospel twice before everyone has heard it once? Who's going to plead for sinners? Who's going to plead for the unrighteous as we stand here tonight? Oh, man, I wanted to shout. Oh, man, I wanted to... I really want to, 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 to flex my preaching muscle tonight, but I believe that God had a different plan for everyone today. Because look at what he told the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. Those no good rotten sinners are going to go to hell. But the first, the next verse really gets me. And such were some of you. But you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our who are the unrighteous, the unrighteous are the, fornic the fornicators, the, idol the idolaters, the adulterers, the effeminate, the abusers of themselves with mankind, the thieves, the covetous, the drunkards, the revelers, the extortioners. Who is the unrighteous? Us. Aren't you thankful that although you were wicked, somebody witnessed to you? Although you didn't have no right to the blessing, somebody brought you to Sunday school. Although you had no right to know who Jesus was, somebody taught you a Bible study. Hallelujah. Abraham, who's going to plead for the unrighteous? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm thankful for the righteous that will be saved. But is there someone in this church tonight that would like to find a place to pray, if nothing else, but to plead for the unrighteous in your life? In the name of Jesus, hallelujah.
I'm 